G'day guys, today's ride uh, we're going to go to from from Bewa to Glasshouse. So just stick the helmet on. Gonna try and go all back trails. Minimal roads. So we'll see how we go. Just gotta get some gear on. Uh, right now I'm at the uh, Bewa Sports Ground. Skate park's just there, and the uh, pool behind it, and the sports ground over there. So, I'll give the Raptor a blast, see how she goes. I've ridden part of these trails before, so some of the territory is a bit familiar, and some of it isn't. So, let's see how we go. Set the mirror up properly. I'll be able to see behind me. There's a little bit of road riding. Not too much though. So. I really like to go off road. I'm really not supposed to be on this road. It's got a centre line. But been a fair bit of rain lately so I'm likely to find a few puddles. Uh, this track's pretty long so I'm going to um, turn eco off. So we get a little bit of speed up. There we go, the campground's pretty busy. It's the first of January 2023 so happy new year to everybody. Okay, so if we go uh, under the rail line, that'll connect up to a, a housing estate that uh, fronts onto Steve Irwin Way, so I'm not going to go that way today. We're going to go over here, you can see this steel gates open, uh, that's an entry to a private property. Uh, what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to go on this side of it. Oh, lots of puddles. So, we climb this little hill, I'll just show you here, so that's the uh, entry to the rail line, so it's well fenced off. So I'll go up this little hill and uh, I'll show you where we're going to go. Just watch out for these tree roots, so we're going to get through here. Now they've designed this to keep the motorcycles out. But this is a common thoroughfare for the kids on their um, on their bikes. They go between uh, Bewer and Glasshouse this way. I spoke to a couple of young blokes just the other day and uh, they come through here uh, quite often. So to my right is a uh, quite a large farm. The track's pretty narrow. And up a 
ahead it gets really bumpy. Lots of tree roots. Gonna test out the suspension on the uh, on the Raptor. Just gonna take it easy here because looks like it's uh, a bit muddy. No, it's not too bad. give you a look at the scenery here. Right in front of me is electric fence so I've got to be really careful not to uh, bump into that. So over there that's Mount Mellum and I wish I could remember the name of all the classy house mountains but got a good line of sight to uh, the three of them there. And this uh, field, he's got cattle running um, here although I don't see any today. So yeah, it's um quite a good size farm this one. <clears throat> Alright, well we'll keep going, we'll just try not to uh get knocked off into this <laughs> electric fence. I wanna get zapped. So you can see to my left is the rail line. So on Google Maps, this is a road. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's pretty early morning, it's uh, about 8 a.m. so you can see uh, a good view of the uh, mountains now. The sun's just coming out from the clouds. They're just spectacular, the Glasshouse Mountains. This is such a beautiful area. And uh, there's the cattle. Couldn't see them before. So this is a pretty big farm. I think uh, I think you can see in the distance, just ahead of that mountain, that uh, he's um, he's got more land over there. <coughs> Some of the farms out here are surprisingly big. They really are. All right, we'll keep going. Try and stay on the track. So I've got the front motor engaged, just adds a little bit of performance to the scooter. Oh, tree roots, you can't see them but boy, they're bumpy, I just get out right here so I don't knock the GoPro off. You can see these roots. People think that scooter riding is a lazy person's sport, but when you get off road, it's really quite a workout. These roots are huge. I feel like bringing this dump grinder down and knocking them all down. <laughs> There's been a vehicle in here just. Oh. This is really bumpy here, yeah, very, very slow. There's been a vehicle in here. I don't know if you can see it, but the tracks are there. So I'd say the farmers probably get their uh, four wheel drives out and do a fence run. Gotta yeah, watch out for spiders around here too. Those golden orbs, they make some huge webs. I've ridden through one of them. I didn't get a spider on me, but. You kind of always mindful that you might end up taking one home. Those roots downhill. All right, so there's another view of Mount Mellum. <coughs> that was a bit of a workout, though, wasn't it? The pops. The cattle are right up to the fence here when I was here the other day. And they're just uh, unfazed by uh, the local bicycle tra traffic. Alright, so this is the uh, one of his entries to the farm. A bit rough. I would say in the wet, this would go underwater really easily. It's quite low here. Alright. I've got something stuck in a brake.
It's making that noise. No, nothing fell off. Let's keep going. Yeah, it's definitely full of drive tracks. You can see them. So that one's been through. This is about a six kilometre run to Glasshouse, roughly. As I said, I'm going to try and stay off the roads. It's not bad, this track. Not too bumpy. safely cruise these trails where there's a bit of undulation at around 20, 25 maybe. Just got to pick your lines a bit. A bit like trail bike riding. Keeping it on the terrain is really important when you're off-road. That's pretty much the key between you staying on the, the scooter and uh, coming off. So as you can see here, this is another locked gate and uh, yeah, just a little opening to sneak through. It's um, so much wider than the scooter. Alright, so the other side of the railway line over there is uh, a f maybe another 500 metres to the east is Steve Irwin Way. So, let's go. Oh, puddle wasn't here the other day. Gotta watch out these puddles. Never know what you're going to get. Huh. Okay, up to a road. So, this is Railway Parade, another view of Glasshouse Mountains. This is another large farm. This is, uh, from what I've seen, this is a pineapple farm. You can see pines in the distance towards the sheds. The noise to my left, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, there's some sort of machine working pretty hard anyway. So this is um, Railway Parade, the Glasshouse. And uh, so I'm going to sneak down here. I'll probably only go about uh, maybe 500 metres, then we'll get off road again. Alright, so I'll just turn the power up a bit so we can get a bit of speed up. As I said, if it's line marked, I'm not supposed to be on it, but as you can see, just up here it's not. Okay, let's go. go this way 
to um, through Young's Road into Glasshouse. We're not that far away from Glasshouse now. So because of the rain, there's a bit of water here. So I'd say that during uh, during wet weather, extreme wet weather events, you probably wouldn't be able to pass through here. Justin the power. Alright, let's go. <laughs> Haven't been through um, up Young's Road before. So, under the rail line. Oop. Turn that front motor off. Don't need it. And we got more pump happens. Look at a pineapple farm. Oh, that noise in the distance, that's so uh, you can see it up here. That's um, some sort of machine, it sounded like a pretty big tractor. There's pineapples as far as the eye can see that way. This is a decent sized farm. So, yeah, beautiful area here, that's for sure. I uh, think, let's have a closer look. aren't ready yet. Not that I'm a, an expert in pines. I like to eat them though. Whoa. So you just don't know the terrain. A bit of sand there and nearly knocked me off. Oh, timber bridge. Running water there, I'll switch the front motor on. Get up this hill. So, this is Young's Road, Glasshouse Mountains, Queensland, Australia. More pines. Let's have a look at the sign. What have we got? Ah, uh, biosecurity sign. Yeah, these ones look like they're uh, coming up pretty good. As you can see, it's a, a decent sized farm. So I'd say this guy owns all that land right down to the rail line. Alright, let's keep going. say that's uh, maybe avocados, but over to the right there's uh, a lot of new sheds, new buildings there, rotundas. Pretty well set up, someone walking their dog there. Alright, we'll get going. Not far from town now. It's always cruise past people pretty slowly, don't want to scare the dogs. Morning! I'll have to look that up. Same over here. If you look at it on uh, Google Earth, you see the roads. It's quite spectacular from the sky. Uh,
in their own yard. into Young's Road. I can't remember the name of this road. Anyway, no through road up there, so this is the way to town. Trees, they're open. They're always open. So that's the uh, Clarkhouse Tavern over there and the rail station. And then the uh, IGA. There's no supermarket in Glasshouse, so this is the bulk of the shops. And the pizza shop there. Pretty good pizzas from there too. And uh, CJ's Pastry, that's, um, they got several outlets. Uh, bakery, cafe. Uh, coffee's pretty good from that place. There's one down in the spot. So I'll just show you. So there's uh, Steve Irwin Way. And uh, so to the left is north, to the right is south. Nice park there. Had our grandkids at that park a few times. Pretty good. It's pretty warm here. I'm going to get in the shade. I'm going to shade and have a drink. Now uh, the other side of the um, the other side of the rail line uh, is a pretty large minor ten, and it's uh, a pretty good hardware. We try and um, support the local hardware businesses. The one in uh, Viewmore, it's um, cooperatively owned by the Kitchen Creek Co-op. It's a good little hardware. And this Mighty 10 here is also, as far as I remember, it's a, a co-op hardware as well. So that's really good because we're when we buy from those businesses, we're putting money back into the uh, farming community. And all the young people are banging on about, you know, looking after our farmers, but this is where the rubber meets the road. These towns survive on on the farm industry. It's a, uh, it's a big deal. And uh, I remember when I was young and used to come to this area for work a lot and uh, the local businesses were uh, reliant on, on the farmers 
spending their money in town, so it's a uh, it's a pretty nice um pretty nice place. We'll just nick across the road. Pretty quiet today, which is understandable. Let's grab a bit of shade. Under the tree here. Grab a bit of water. So I'll check on the trip meter, but I'm pretty sure we've done about six kilometres to get to here through the uh, through the back road. So not a bad run, mostly off road. So what have we done? 4.9, so five kilometres. Yep, so that's good. All right. Right, we'll head back, see what we encounter. So we can't remember the name of that road. Is it on a sign over there? It is, I think. We've got here. <laughs> Post office. That's Reed Street, no, anyway, get off the road. The power turned up at the moment, so <laughs> this road is very touchy. Ah, oh, Bruce Parade, there it is, Bruce Parade. the end of Bruce sometime and check out what's there.
check the power setting. That's no, good. Yep. Alright, we're good to go. So Mount Mellon over there. Few ruts, ruts here from cars, so stay in the middle. Keep away from those ruts. They've had to they've had to gain all this up. Um, this is probably uh, gated up by maybe council. It's not farm property. It's more or less an easement, but they probably have to gate it up because they don't want four wheel drives to come through here and <coughs> create and cause havoc. Uh, same with motorcyclists. They want to try and keep those guys out too. The dead bike riders. This is a a big area for dirt bike riding. Lots of, uh, lots of really good trails and uh, uh, yeah, some beautiful forward ride tracks out to the west there, which is where we're looking now. So it's a big area, the glass house and the beer bar and state forest. Uh, so I'm going to do some uh, videos down in there. I want to uh, climb Wild Horse Mountain. <coughs> It's a foot trail, but it's okay if I just cruise quietly along there and keep the speed limit, I'll be good. Went up to Wild Horse when I was a young guy. I used to ride this area on trail bikes in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, so this area is not foreign to me. Just haven't uh, done this before on an e-scooter. So 
just taking it a bit easy. It's um, pretty bumpy along here. Even though the suspension on the Raptor's good, it's um, it's still a bit of a bumpy ride. You've got to keep your knees bent. Stop you from uh, getting jarred up through your spine. Good idea. Just different riding techniques, you know, off-road is totally different to road. You know, path riding is pretty straightforward. But off-road requires a lot of uh, body movement to keep the thing upright, to keep you on the on the deck. And you gotta you gotta really pick your terrain because you can um, you can come off pretty quickly. I haven't come off yet, but I'm sure it'll happen. I'm just wearing shorts and a t-shirt and a good pair of runners. A bit muddy here. Alright, yeah, so uh, probably going to invest in a, uh, a better helmet. I'm wearing a Bell uh, mountain bike helmet, a MIPS helmet, so it's a good quality helmet, but I'm going to buy a uh, lightweight motocross helmet as well for some of this more intense off-road stuff. That way if I do hit the deck above 15 k's an hour I've got a good chance of survival. Uh, and I'll probably get myself some uh, knee protection as well. Yeah, it's really rough along here, I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty rough. Just dodged the spider web. <laughs> then we're going to find them. Little creek to my left there. So this is the one I said before that probably goes underwater. And there's a drain under the rail line there. You can see. Oh, there's a huge golden orb over there. Yeah, no, better watch where I'm going. Alright. Bit rough through here. Bit of a climb. This thing is just awesome for climbing. You can see the cattle have moved along a bit. Probably in green after all this rain we've had. Perfect uh, cattle fodder. And here we are, the electric fence again. So, oh, and the tree roots. Goodness me, I'm going to get off these tree roots. Look at this. Can you see that one? That's a massive one. You hit that, you just go sideways. The wheels would go to the left. There's another big one. Need to be safe, I'm sorry. Especially when you've got an electric fence. A couple hundred millimetres to your left. This is where the tree roots are. They're just nasty. And of course you've got the low hanging branches. So, getting a morning workout on this little trial. From memory, it's bad just here. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yep. Oh, it's a huge one. Oh. <laughs> I didn't step off that time, but yeah. This is just spring suspension on this scooter. There's no. Uh, no rebound damping, no no proper shock absorbers, so it's a bit you can hear it here it's clunky. You see the uh, suspension just tops it up. It's kind of oh that was a big one, kind of metal to metal if you like. There's no real rubber bump stops so that's kind of a bit of a a design deficiency. Some of the really high-end scooters just stuck down here. Some of the really high-end scooters run proper shocks. I'm just going to step off here for a sec. Oh, the fence is too close. Oh, up comes the front. Yeah, some of the high-end scooters, they, uh, they have proper shocks. So it'd be interesting to put one of those through its paces along this kind of a track. But I think all in all for the price of this compared to those scooters that are this is under 2000 compared to the scooters that are uh, that are you know 4000 upwards 
I think this is excellent value for money. It's got uh, good battery life. We'll check that out shortly. See how much battery we've used. You certainly use a lot more battery when you're off-road, especially when you've got both motors running. So I try and switch the front motor off as much as possible. That way I um, conserve battery. That's a train coming. Let's have a look. What have we got? Uh, just a commuter. The spirit of Queensland came past me the other day. It scared the life out of me. Jeez, it was flying. It must have been. I reckon. I think they do this stretch here. I think they do over 100 kilometres an hour. So he was uh, he was roaring. Little. Uh, there's a pond there, which looks like uh, the farmers are using that water. Not very big though. It's more of a little catchment just there. Yeah, so the high end scooters, you know, like the big money, you know, the carbos and some of the V sets and some of those more name brand if you like but I think I think I've, I've picked the scooter that I uh, that I like um, I've only done just over 100 kilometers on it so it's it's still pretty new and I'm still getting the hang of it but it's um, it's just far better than uh, than the uh, the rear drive you know the, the commuters but then again, those commuters are not designed to... Uh, I could go down that track if I wanted to, but I'll duck in through here. I'm not actually not on private property right now. He's got a gate just over here to the left. So he must have a key to this gate as well. I think I think this, this fence in front of me, this steel fence, it was put in just recently. Looks pretty fresh, so I'd say that's been put in. To, uh, to keep four drivers from coming up through here, up his, up his farm entrance road and up into this, this trail behind me because you could definitely get a four wheel drive up there and uh, I think that's what they're trying to do, is trying to keep these guys out so that's this little uh, space for us to get through which is good so just take it easy so I don't knock anything off just going to have a look at the rear brakes, it's a bit noisy, I don't know what to... I don't see anything caught in there. Anyway, all good. Back to this track now. Just going to go slow, this is quite steep, you mightn't look it, but... Pretty steep, let's go the back brake. Pretty hard. Went back to... That's the entry to the, uh, the rail line. Just up here, I'll just go up here and show you what's here. So this is a, uh, that's Steve and Way straight ahead there. And this is the back of a little estate, which is to the south of Beaver on the western side. So I can't remember the name of this road here, but it's really just an entrance to, uh, to some of the houses. Alright. The thing about these e-scooters are is um, compared to say something petrol powered is well you can sneak around oh, it's rough you can sneak around and uh, apart from the tie noise and me talking there is no noise a bit of a whine from the motors that's playing pretty good there I'll show you another spot in a different video just a uh, little uh, spot I found as part of the Kitchen Creek attachment at Deewa. 
which is a uh, really beautiful little spot. So yeah, uh, no maintenance. I mean, apart from keeping the tyres and the brakes in good condition, you know, there's, there's just nothing to do, which is great because, you know, I've always had trail bikes and you know, someone coming, someone running, I might just pull over. I've always had trail bikes and, and you know, a lot of a lot of maintenance with those. You know, cleaning air filters, changing oil, all that sort of stuff. So at least with this, it's um, it's pretty much maintenance free. Hey, buddy, how are you? Are you? Did you just come from there? Yeah. Okay. So what's is that a private property in there? Oh, no, I don't know. Walk through. Okay. So what is that? Go? That's the high school. Oh, right. Straight up to the high, yeah. Okay. I was just coming back to my mate's house. They blocked it off, but he just lives up there, so. Oh, really? Yeah, I go straight up to the high school over. Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, right. Cheers. Right, see, see, see you, buddy. Well, there you go. So that's, I'll show you up here in a sec, because that, as the young bloke said, goes up to the, uh, the back of the high school over. This is the yeah. front motor. This is steep. My old scooter wouldn't have got up that. Okay, motor off. Oh, you can see through here in the distance. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's the campground, the Biwa campground. So let's get in that truck and have a look. Actually, we might go back this way. So... Unless you're a caravan or a camper, you probably wouldn't even know this is here because it's really not visible. But, uh, this is... Oh, yeah, okay, I see what he means. It just comes to the back of the oval, so it's just a quick away from him to get to where his mate's place. Straight over there. So this is the, uh, the campground behind the sports ground and it's, um, it's always pretty busy, pretty full, but of course Christmas and Easter there's a lot of people there. It would be at capacity now, so we'll just go across the grass here, we can sneak around here. Another train, another commuter. That is a late model commuter. Now, I'm not sure how long they've been in service. They're the ones with the external disc brakes. So, if you live close by those, your house is covered in brake dust non stop. But, our, uh, our train system is terrible. North of, um, north of Brisbane, so Brisbane to, uh, to Nambour, there's only one line. One line. Think about that. Now the goods trains use it, the commuter trains use it, the uh, the trains that go to the north and the northwest use it. Incredibly well managed in terms of um, in terms of use, but we should have had a, at least a, a dual line many years ago. So that's just an indication of the infrastructure not keeping up with. Um, modern times. Alright, so we're at the back of the sports ground. Oh. Oh, we've got to scratch the nose. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, just a little bit of a park area here. Yeah, lots of campers there. More than uh, more than I've ever seen, in fact. So, oh, okay. So if I go that way, or so if I go right or left, it's okay. I don't really want to go across the oval. Ah, oh, what the heck? Let's go across the oval. Let's take it easy. Uh, the 
skate park. Uh, my grandkids love the skate park. They bring their scooters and sometimes their bikes. But it's um, a good skate park. During the uh, during the week, it's um, it gets uh, attracts a lot of teenagers before and um, after school, so. Kind of gets a bit feral if you like, but yeah. you can see that. I was too busy looking ahead, just ran over a bollard. <laughs> Thank goodness the suspension. A couple of guys at the skate park. Alright, so back where we started. And uh, we've got the pools open. Yeah, not much activity there though, but they're open. Which is good. Good, uh, good community pool this one. Gotta watch it here. People just jump out in front of you. Walk around corners. So this is Roberts Road. So I'll just I'll stop and show you. So you can see it's the view of town centre over there. So straight through there you can't actually see it, but the other side of the roundabout is Simpson Street and the, uh, the main town area and then um, this way is uh, Roberts Road heading towards Peachester Road to see how much battery we've got left Peach. Peach. All right, so we'll just, um, we'll just go into the tunnel just to dust the tower Turn it right down for, <coughs> turn it down for the commuting. Try and stick to 12. There's no way the coppers will get under me here. <laughs> the tunnel goes under the uh, rail overpass. This rail overpass was put in quite a while back and it really did separate the town. I'm going to show you where the uh, original rail crossing was. Go through this tunnel. So now we're on the other side of the, uh, of the roundabout and a uh, few unit blocks along here. Coming up on the left is Aldi, which uh, this Aldi service is quite a big area. Well, the town does. Uh, Peachester, Lansborough, Mullaney, and to the south, Glasshouse, Deer Barn. Just got another spider web on me, it's a little one. Not going to worry about that. It's a nice, uh, nice trail through here. So, this road here is the road into the sports ground. So, you can see Aldi on the left there and uh, the main street up ahead. So that's the uh, road to the sports ground. We'll just sneak across here. It's a good place to get run over here. Pretty quiet today though. So because of it being Sunday and New Year's Day, uh, oh yeah, there's a few cars up here. I think I know where they are. They'll be at um, Bianta, which is a local cafe. So I'll just stop here and give you a look at what's in the view wall. So Aldi. Uh, a lot of um, uh, medical centre stuff here, which is good for us old people. open and uh, that's a real local success story he started out pretty small Steve is the owner and uh, it's probably the busiest cafe in here I don't know where his main sign's gone 
maybe he's getting that fixed up, but yeah, he's actually uh, got two shots. The, uh, the shot to the left there, uh, he opened that up. I opened the cafe into there a couple of years ago. But it's very popular, very well priced, well run, and uh, good coffee, good service. So the old rail line, that's hilarious, that's a Havel. <laughs> Young guy driving it, his sound system pumped right up. So will that be the new hot car? Leo's yeah, Falcon U, that sounds pretty good. Will that be the new hotted up car, the Havels? Who knows? A shudder to think that we're going to hot up a Chinese car. Okay, so this, this shop here um, was right opposite the rail crossing, so the rail crossing was here. And just the other side, we can't see it. Hang on, we'll go back a minute. Can we see it? Oh yeah, I'll see what I'll turn around. Turn this beast around. I'll show you the pub. Alright. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's bits and quick. Okay, so the rail cross you can see more Hinney Street where that red car is going. So that was um, that came straight across the rail, original rail crossing was here and you would come across the rail crossing and go left or right wherever you wanted to go in town and so they pretty much divided the town when they did that which is a real shame uh, I have a lot of history with that pub um, <laughs> sounds terrible doesn't it sounds like I was one of the one of the, uh, the, the <laughs> one of the hard drinkers that's not the case but anyway um, yeah I've uh, Oh, we got music. Oh, it's music coming out of these things here. Yeah, council provide this soothing music. <laughs> Good on them. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of history with that pub um, from a previous business. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, so, yeah, this is... Uh, this is where the original rail crossing was, but they put this straight overpass in to get rid of the rail crossing, you know, because they're trying to get rid of all rail crossings. And of course, it divided the town over to the left here. There's a mail shop on the corner in the 70s next door, which we can't see behind this building, was actually Buell Motors, which was a Holden dealership. That's where you bought your Holden. So, of course, Holden was uh, a popular car in the hinterland because the dealer was here. Okay, so this is a nice little area that the council of council some years ago did a whole makeover of this main street area. They've done a nice job, but they did take out a lot of parking, which seems to be the common theme. And yeah, I don't know. I just kind of divided over it. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty. Um, they've done a nice job. Landscaping is good. Paths are good. You know, but like. This is the rail commuter car park for this side of town. As you can see, it's tiny. The, the other side, which we'll go across in another video, the other side is, um, is much bigger. So let's stop here and have a look. So, uh, Nettie's nose bag there, our local pretty iconic takeaway. Changed hands. A couple of years ago. Uh, some uh, uh, young um, Indian couple own it now and uh, we're booming along, doing a good job. So we did lose we did lose Quirky Cafe a few years ago. I uh, used to uh, go there for a coffee and uh, food pretty regularly but we lost that and uh, Bombay Bliss have taken over that shop now so Bombay Bliss is our local Indian takeaway or one of them so this is uh, so it's Peachester Road on the left so the, I'll say the new Beewa Village shopping centre because it's not that old and uh, this, you know, this is crossing 
Actually, we won't. We'll go bush. Look, we need more motor. Here we go. Okay, so... It's a nice little vantage point. So this is the, uh, the Shell Servo, the local servo. This is run by the Kuching Creek Cooperative. So you can see down that way it's uh, Peachester Road and that's Mount Kuchin. And behind it, another one, another one of the Glasshouse Mountains. I have to study my uh, Glasshouse Mountains, won't I? And uh, so we've got a K Hub in here, we've got um, Woolworths and quite a lot of other shops. Uh, behind the uh, Shell Servo, which is where we always buy our fuel. There is another servo in town, that's the Woolworths servo, which is down there and uh, I've never, built, ne never been, I've never bought fuel there. I don't support those guys because this one's, this one's run by the co-op so it puts money straight back into the community and employs local people. Not that the Woolies servo doesn't employ local people but I don't like their business model. So this is our co-op hardware. It's um, five years ago they um, they opened this up uh, into a hardware store as well. So I'm not sure if they expanded the shed, but so uh, this is um, this half of the shed is this hardware, and then the other half up the back here is the rural supplies. So lots of uh, agricultural stuff in there. Uh, you can see here. Oh, watch the speed bumps. You can see here a lot of ag stuff here, and you know, farm fencing, ag pipe. You name it, we got it. Oh yeah, that's right. So we got a, a fresh and save in uh, in the shopping centre as well. So let's go a bit further up. Sun's Chinese on the left, it's our favourite Chinese. He's a, uh, a lovely local, Simon's his name, and uh, Simon's son. And he, uh, not long back, built these buildings on the corner, so behind, you can see the building just behind Sun's Chinese there. Oh, that's his as well, that's um, actually a private school in there. So. This is Pine Camp Road to the left and that goes all the way to Old Gimpy Road. So we've uh, diverged a bit from the, uh, the trek to uh, Glass House but that's okay. So Lansborough straight down here about five kilometres. I've ridden that, um, there's paths all the way there. I've ridden that and um, it's, uh, it's a good trail to ride, that's for sure. Oh, oh we've got a new barbecue in here. Look at that, that's brand new. Didn't even notice that. All right, so how many kilometres have we done? So, 113 or what? Can you see that? 113. Yep, wrong button. So down 11, 11.1 11 kilometres today. Alright guys, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope you find uh, these videos enjoyable. And uh, catch you later. Until next time.